Hello everybody. It is time for our third episode of the program Call of Duty on Defense Matters. This time I will be talking about the Siachen Glacier especially with regard to recent references about its demilitarization. I hope you find it informative and interesting. Siachen Glacier is one of the largest glaciers outside the polar regions. It has also been the backdrop of the world's largest battleground. Siachen Glacier, about 70 kilometers in length, one of the world's longest glaciers, has a number of fast-flowing surface streams and is the source of the Nubra River. which is part of the Indus river system. Siachen glacier is part of the Ladakh division of the erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir which acceded to India after India became independent on 15th August 1947. Its strategic importance lies in the fact that the actual ground position line or AGPL in short which separates the indian and pakistani troops in this area lies close to the chinese occupied areas of shaksgam valley towards the north and aksai chin towards the east pakistan tried to grab parts of jnk state soon after independence using irregular forces backed by the pakistan army consequent to the signing of the accession document by the maharaja of jnk On 26th October 1947 the Indian army intervened and pushed back the intruders from much of the areas captured by them on conclusion of that war known as the first Indo-Pak war of 1947-48 the Karachi agreement was signed on 27 July 1949 by military representatives of both countries supervised by the United Nations Commission for India and Pakistan whereby a ceasefire line separating the opposing forces was established in JNK the second indo-pak war of 1965 was fought across the ceasefire line and across the international border to its south subsequently after the third indo-pak war of 1971 as a consequence of the shimla agreement of 2nd july 1972 it was agreed to convert the ceasefire line as it existed at the end of the war as the line of control as part of this process the line of control also known as the loc was demarcated on the ground by military representatives on both sides right up to a point at the base of the siachen glacier known on the map as nj9842 the uninhabited area of siachen glacier north of this point was glaciated and hazardous thus the loc was left undemarcated in this area up to the karakoram pass pakistan thereafter interpreted that the loc ran south to northeast from nj9842 to karakoram pass the meeting point of india's boundary with china as a straight line however according to india the loc runs northwards from nj9842 along the highest crest line on the western edge of the glacier known as the saltoro ridge up to the indira col of the siachen glacier indira col or indira pass is the area where territories of jnk meet the shaksgam valley territory occupied by pakistan in 1947 and illegally ceded to china by them in 1963 post 1972 Pakistan tried to establish its ownership of the Siachen glacier by surreptitiously authorizing foreign mountaineering expeditions to climb the mountain peaks within this glaciated area sensing nefarious pakistani designs the indian army in 1978 and 
sent military patrols and mountaineering expeditions to the Siachen Glacier to carry out reconnaissance of the area. These expeditions were led by a well-renowned mountaineer, the late Colonel Narendra Kumar, also known as Bull, who had earlier headed the Army's High Altitude Warfare School. In early 1984, information was received that the Pakistan Army was planning to undertake an operation to occupy and take physical control of the glacier. The Indian Army, in a preemptive action, launched Operation Meghdoot in April of that year and occupied the Saltoro Ridge, thus taking control of the Siachen Glacier, covering nearly 2,600 square kilometers. Since then, Indian troops hold the upper areas of the glacier, including Gyongla, Chumik Kangdi, Saltoro Ridge, Bila Fondla, Siala, and Indira Kaul West, while Pakistani troops hold the western slopes and foothills of the Saltoro Ridge. Three years later, in April 1987, Pakistani troops infiltrated into the glacier area and captured a dominating position at over 20, 21,000 feet height, which they named as Kayat Post from where they could fire on the Indian troops. After some initial attempts at dislodging the Pakistanis failed, Indian Army troops launched Operation Rajiv in June 1987 and recaptured the post. The post was renamed Bana Post after the leader of the team which captured the post, Naib Subedar Bana Singh of the 8th Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry. He was awarded the Parambir Chakra for his personal acts of gallantry. Thereafter, sporadic firing continued by both sides on the glacier till a ceasefire came into effect in 2003. Since the beginning, troops occupying heights of 21,000 to 24,000 feet on both sides of the actual ground position line on the glacier have been facing inherent dangers due to the extremely challenging conditions of high altitude, cold climate, mountainous terrain, and turbulent weather. This also includes periodic snowstorms and avalanches. Temperatures can drop to minus 60 degrees Celsius in winter. Around 1,000 fatal casualties have been suffered by either side, less than one-fourth of these due to enemy action. The Indian Army recorded a high percentage of casualties in the late 80s and early 90s, but figures have been brought down significantly in the last 10 to 15 years. Also, the operational logistics of maintaining such large forces on the glacier, mostly by transport aircraft and helicopters on the Indian side, are also extremely challenging and expensive. According to an estimate, India spends around Rs 6 crores a day that is around Rs 2,200 crores a year to ensure that troops on the glacier are logistically sustained. All these complexities have resulted over the years in calls for demilitarization of the Siachen Glacier, mostly by the Pakistan Army, which holds tactically disadvantageous positions on the ground. These calls gained urgency after April 2012 when the Pakistani army lost 140 soldiers in a single avalanche incident. There are some voices within the Indian side too which support demilitarization, especially seeing it as a low-hanging fruit that can set positive conditions for further peace talks between India and Pakistan. Recently, there was a comment that the subject of demilitarization can be considered by the Indian side provided Pakistan accepts and ratifies the AGPL. Before we go any further, let us take a look at what demilitarization entails in the context that the Indian Army is holding the tactically advantageous higher ridgeline in this area. Demilitarization would entail the Indian Army withdrawing from this area in exchange for an assurance and undertaking from the Pakistani government and army that they would not occupy the vacated area in future. Objections from the Indian side to demilitarization refer to the possibility 
that Pakistani army troops would then occupy the vacated area, after which it would be almost impossible to dislodge them from these higher areas. So what are the pros and cons of demilitarization of the Siachen Glacier? Let us look at the pros and cons one by one. Firstly, the pros. Demilitarization could save a substantial number of our troops from the hazards of deployment on the glacier and thus reduce the possibility of casualties on this count. Consequently, the troops would be available for duties in other areas. Secondly, the expenditure on maintenance of troops would be reduced significantly. Thirdly, as envisaged in the past, it could set the ball rolling towards achieving long-term peace with our Western neighbor. Now for the cons. Firstly, whereas demilitarization would be based on trust, our experience of the past has shown that our Western neighbor and its army are not worthy of their trust. The history of India-Pakistan relations is marked by numerous instances of duplicitous behavior by Pakistan, Kargil 1999 being the most prominent example. What assurance do we have that their behavior on this issue will be any different from the past? None at all. Frankly, there is no foolproof way of preventing Pakistani troops from taking physical control of the glacier, even if they accept and ratify the AGPL. Secondly, Siachen Glacier is located in the proximity of the line of actual control between the Indian Army and the Chinese Army troops in eastern Ladakh, where they have been in eyeball-to-eyeball -eyeball confrontation for the past nearly two years. It is significant that the Karakoram Pass on the northeastern edge of the glacier is just 30 kilometers from the Depsang Plains, which sees frequent tension between China and India. Demilitarization of the glacier could well open it up to activity by the PLA in connivance with the Pakistan Army. Thirdly, troop deployments on the Siachen Glacier have resulted in many units of the Indian Army being acclimatized and trained in high altitude warfare, which can be an important asset in case of conflict with either of our adversaries. Withdrawal from the Siachen Glacier would lead to the Indian soldiers losing one of his most important and unique strengths, the capability to fight effectively at high altitudes. To summarize, after weighing the pros and cons, it may be prudent to not demilitarize the Siachen Glacier due to the perils of such an action. Clearly, demilitarization in the foreseeable future will not be in our nation's interest. With that, I come to the end of this episode. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Jai Hind and good day.